We're going to look at the area to the left hand. I'm not, I'm not spending time here calculating areas under curves because this is about this is about chi square goodness of fit test. So let me actually just tell you what them areas are below them. Yeah. Okay. So the area under a standard normal curve to the left hand side of 1.75 is approximately 0 0.04. I'll just round to two decimal places. The area to the left hand side of minus 1.08 under standard normal curve is approximately 0 0.14. Okay. The area to the left of minus 0 0.41 is approximately, no, I'm saying approximately here, 0 0.34. The next one is about 0 0.60. The area to the left of, of 0 0.93 is approximately 0 0.82. The area to the left of 1.6 is approximately 0 0.995. Okay. Now, this final interval here, this final interval here, yeah, has a particular upper bound. We're looking at the area to the left-hand side of the upper bounds, but the upper bound that we've created here is from 70 up to infinity, okay? It's from 70 all the way up to positive infinity. So the area to the left-hand side of it must be, equal to, must be equal to one unit, okay? So now we've calculated our areas, okay? Well, you've gone off and calculated your areas under your curves, okay? And uh, what we want to now find out is, okay, how much area falls within the curves? Okay. And don't forget, these are cumulative areas. So actually all we have to do is we have to take the, the current area away from the previous one to give us the area within the interval itself. So actually, the area that's greater than 7, greater than or equal to 70, is 1 minus 0 0.95, which is 0 0.05. The area that's between 60 and 70, okay, well, the area up to 70 is 0 0.95, the area up to 60 is 0 0.82, so the area in here must be 0 0.95 minus 0 0.82, which gives us a value of uh, 0 0.13, okay. The area in the interval from 50 to 60, well, it's upper bound is 60, the area accumulated up to 60 is 0.82. The area accumulated up to 50 is 0.60. So actually when we take this away from this, we end up with the area in that particular interval is 0 0.22. Okay? The area inside here is going to be 0 0.26. The area inside here is going to be 0 0.20. Okay? The area inside here is going to be 0 0.10. And the area in this interval here, less than 20, is 0 0.04. Okay? So, if you think about it from a, a, this is an area perspective, from a percentage perspective, what we're saying is we'd expect, we respect the Z scores, okay, and the areas to the left-hand side of them and the areas within the intervals, we'd expect 13% of observations to be between 60 and 70. We'd expect 22% to be between 50 and 60, 26% between 40 and 50, and so on and so forth. So actually, we know that there was 60 observations, Okay. So this is the proportion of observations that we'd expect. In other words, we'd expect 4% of the 69 to be in here, okay, to be within that interval, okay, because that's what 0 0.04 represents 4%. So actually what we'd expect is 0 0.04 times 69. So we have 0 0.04 times 69 give us, gives us, we'd expect there to be 2.76 observations less than 20, okay. We expect 10%, okay, to be 10% of them to be between 20 and 30. So that's that's approximately 6.90, okay. 20% uh, uh, of these, so it's it's 69 by 0 0.20 gives us a value of 13.80, 13 13 okay. We expect 26% of the observations to be between 40 and 50. 26% of the 69, so 69 by 0.26 gives us a value of approximately 17.94. Okay, and we expect 22% of the 69 to be within this interval. Okay, so it's 69 by uh, 0 0.22, 22%. Okay, which gives us a value of 15, 15.18. And we'd expect 13% to be within the interval 60 to 70. So it's 13% of 69. So 69 pi 0.13 gives us a value of approximately approximately 8.97. 8.97. And we'd expect pro approximately 5% to be, be to be greater than 70, okay? Out to infinity. So 5% is 69. So 69 by 5%, 0 0.05, gives us a value of approximately 3.45, okay? There are expected frequencies, okay? So, 
Now that we've calculated our expected frequencies, yeah, we can actually now do our, our test of difference, yeah, okay, we can actually now undertake our chi squared goodness of fit, okay. So I want to do that next, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the hypothesis test, okay. Let's just keep in mind we have our observed frequencies, we've calculated our expected frequencies, so now we can do the chi squared goodness of fit test, okay. And from a hypothesis perspective, from our hypothesis perspective, we have a number of steps. Step one is to define the hypothesis, okay, okay, okay. Uh, the null position, okay, the null position H0, okay. Well, the null position is what we're expecting, okay. Now, our expected frequencies were based off a normal distribution, okay. So, what we expect to happen from a null position, this is what we're assuming. When we calculate our expected frequencies, we assumed normality, and these were based off z-scores and cumulative areas and areas within intervals, okay. But they were based off a standard normal curve, okay. Uh, so our null position is what we've built our expectation from, yeah, and our null position is that the distribution is normal, okay, okay, the distribution, the distribution, okay, is normal, okay, and the alternative is that that's not the case, okay, that the distribution, the distribution, okay, is not normal, okay. Don't forget, from a hypothesis perspective, the only inference that we can ever make is by moving from H0 to HA when we reject, okay? So just because if we don't find evidence to suggest that we can reject, it doesn't actually make it normal. It doesn't make that the, that the sample and the population the sample has been drawn from normal. It just means that we've no evidence to suggest that it's not normal, okay? Stage two is to define our significance level, okay? So the significance of our test, and we're just going to set alpha to be equal to 0 0.05. In other words, if I do reject the null hypothesis, okay, I'll only do it 